Welcome back and uh, thank you for staying with us on Talk of the Nation tonight. We do realize that for the third month running, Ugandans are growing frustrated by the rise in commodity prices that started with a dramatic rise in the cost of fuel in January. And while the rise was then explained by delays in processing fuel trucks entering into Uganda, that excuse has since been overtaken by a rise in the cost of other commodities, some of which are even grown in the country. So tonight, we do speak to Francis Chislinia, who is, uh, who is the Deputy Executive Director, Director of the Private Sector Foundation of Uganda on the matter, and most importantly, on how we should you know, work towards improving the current situation in the country. A very good evening, and uh, thank you for joining us tonight. Good evening, and good evening, uh, viewers. Well, we did have uh, a fair share of the experience of the manufacturers and also other business leaders on the current high cost of living. But from where you sit, what is the problem? What is behind the high commodity prices as we speak? Is it the Ukraine-Russia war? Is it delays here and there? Is it high taxation? What exactly is happening on ground? Thank you very much. And uh, it's a combination of so many things. And as you rightly put it, as we started the year, we had this challenge in uh, the fuel, and uh, this created prices because of uh, increases because of scarcity, and obviously because of the way uh, business and life moves uh, on fuel, uh, prices went up. So every time fuel prices are increased, it triggers mm -hmm. uh, price increases across the entire spectrum of things. Now, along with that, as uh, 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 we are getting used to the challenge that came out because of the problems at uh, the border, uh, we now came up with these geopolitical challenges uh, in, uh, in Europe, it's especially uh, Russia and uh, uh, Ukraine. Obviously, what it brought in very clearly was an addition to the list of things where we had shortages, and also um, the unprecedented uh, sanctions, the disruption in supply chains, all of those created um, shortages that are now uh, gagging up together and, and affecting even other uh, prices of other commodities. Particularly in Uganda, uh, one area that has been affected strongly is in the area of oils and fats, which are used for both uh, edible, edible oils as well as soaps. So we've seen increases in prices in those areas. Thirdly, um, we also saw at the beginning of this year uh, changes in the tax structures of, uh, uh, of uh, um, taxing or uh, raw materials that are used uh, to make uh, uh, both cooking oil and the soaps. Of course, the reasons are understandable, but uh, the challenge we now have is that also that triggered its own ch chain reaction on increases in the prices. But uh, I'll be very specific, the cost of crude palm oil, which is the raw material from which we create edible oils and also uh, soaps, uh, it was increased by 10%, uh, there was an excise tax that came in, sorry, the, the import duty of 10% was introduced. So specifically, that created a few challenges in the processes of uh, doing, of uh, making the soaps and the oils. So this has also added to the challenge we have. But you also put it very well that some of these could be, we could actually, like for instance, the oils. We have palm oil in Uganda, we have sunflower in Uganda. Why are we why do we have these increases? You Does say, it go back to the aspect of fertilizers <laughs> or the things that are done um, before the end product? Where exactly is to, the issue? To, to begin with, our consumption of oils in Uganda is much, much, much higher than the domestic production. Mm. We've not built the production capacity internally to be able to substitute everything that we import. But from a direction perspective, I think the country is taking the right direction focusing on expanding the acreage of palm oil in Uganda is very, very, very crucial. Mm -hmm. Secondly, expanding the acreage of soybean as well as sunflower is also important. But unfortunately, in the last season, especially on the sunflower season, we also had a challenge of, of seeds because where we get the seeds from in South Africa, the suppliers were affected by strikes and therefore we didn't get sufficient seed for planting this season. Mm -hmm. So we don't have 
uh, as much stock as we used to have. So even that one has also added to the compounding of the challenges that we have on costs on oil. But we are seeing uh, a number of uh, products are going to be or are starting already to be affected by uh, the scarcity in the international market, the disruption in the supply chains, and also the general increase in prices across the world. Yeah. We know for sure right now that building materials are going up. True. And it, we've also, uh, we are aware that fertilizers are also going up. So, so in other we are words, going we are going to see a spiral effect I, yes. in which different commodities are going to be affected. Yeah. That is something we Ugandans have to prepare for at the moment. Very much so. But then the other question is who do we blame? Is there someone we have to blame? Is there someone not doing it right? Because there was also an issue of increasing the taxes coming through. So who do we, you know, who do we blame in, in, in these different aspects? Is it the private sector or is it the government or is it both? Uh, I don't want to blame. I, I, I want to, I'm part of that, of, 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 the of private those, sector. those people that believe that uh, mm. we are in this together. The mm. government, the private sector, the business community, the consumers, all of us are in this together and we are all well-meaning in whatever we do. But sometimes we get overwhelmed by some challenges that uh, sometimes come uh, beyond our control. For instance, mm. the issue of uh, uh, the fighting the, the in, in Russia and Ukraine, uh, we don't have anything to do with it as a country. Mm. And also as a country, we've made a very good policy direction where we want to industrialize because we think by industrializing that is when we can lift more people out of poverty and the industrialization means that we've got to win ourselves off importation somehow so that's why you see some taxes that were introduced uh, lately have been trying to support domestic production and consumption. Mm. Now, all of those are very uh, well-meaning things, but what happens today is that we are in this situation. We are here, the war has gone, has, has come in, everything has been disrupted internationally. We are part of the global village and are suffering. Now, what, what should each one of us seed, sacrifice to ensure that we all can bear bear the life in this uh, situation. Now, for the people in the business community, they are struggling on a daily basis. There is a lot, a lot, a lot of uh, challenges that the business people go through on a daily basis, mm. and uh, none, most of it is not really uh, addressed. That is one. The second thing, the consumers themselves are also going through the common person, going through difficult challenges on a daily basis. If you're a farmer, most likely, if you have a good harvest, the prices will be low. If the harvest is, if the prices are high, the harvest is, is almost not there. So, th there are all those challenges. If you are a salaried person, not it's not every day that your salary will change. Mm. So, so you keep on, you keep on uh, having these problems. Then the government side, they also have all this demand for services and a demand for money all the time, which demands that they keep on raising. Uh, taxes all the time. But now, where we are, what should we do? Who should sacrifice for the others? Now, the common person, as I said, really it is uh, impossible for us to start always uh, uh, look out for him to be able to bear these kind of challenges. Uh, some of the policies that we, especially tax policies in the country, one of the challenges they do is to always look at putting taxes on transactions, on processes to make money. Mm -hmm. If you import a raw material, they put a tax. If you make a product out of it, they put an excise duty. If you take it to the market, they put a VAT. Now, all of those taxes are process-based taxes, and unfortunately, those taxes end up with, they end up at the consumer side, it is the common person who suffers, who those, suffers. Tax, those Because taxes. there are people at the top who yeah, do not even know yeah. uh, the cost of, uh, of, of a bar of soap, for example, or if, of a tin of cooking oil. They have no voice at all. So in the end, mm. they are the ones who bear this all the time. Mm. Now, should we be doing this all the time? We need an open, candid discussion on this. Mm. I would think, in, in my view, that let us now look at who else should take some sacrifice? And here we are looking at government. Mm. Must those taxes really remain in this situation? Like the taxes that we talked about, the import duty mm. on crude palm oil that has created this confusion. Should it really continue?
That is a question that you are leaving the government officials watching us tonight to reflect on that because the biggest fear currently is that the, the, this effect may have long-term effects, you know, so we really need to find ways to address the current economic trends that we are seeing in the country. Thank you so much uh, for joining us tonight and thank you as well for joining us tonight on Talk of the Nation. This conversation, we can keep it online. We'll take a short break and NTV Weekend Edition will return shortly.